Hi, this is Paul James, and this is an image that I captured while giving a photographic workshop along the Italian Riviera this year. It's the village Vernazza in the Cinque Terre, and I'll be going back uh, every year to give workshops in this area. I'm working with this image in Adobe Photoshop CS5. I'm going to go into the bridge section of Photoshop and open this image up into Camera Raw. I've opened these images up into Adobe um, Bridge so that I could see them a little bit better. If you click on the raw file, the CR2 files, it opens up into a preview file that's a little bit larger so you can view them. I've already pre-selected uh, two of the images that I want and put them into a separate folder. I'm going to go to the other CR2 file, hold the control P down and click. Now that you've selected both of the CR2 files, you can see them in the preview box above, uh, a little larger. I'm going to go ahead and right click uh, on the image and then go to open. It's going to open it up into Camera Raw 6.2. Now I want you to go up to select all, click on that. We'll select both of the CR2 files. If you have uh, more than two opened up, it will select any number of CR2 files that are open in Camera Raw. Before you start processing, the most important portion to look at is over at the histogram to make sure everything is there. You have a little bit of clipping in the highlight area, uh, which is normal for shooting into the sky, and you have a little bit of clipping in the shadow area. Also, I was using a gradient uh, filter on here to bring out the sky a little bit more, and it overlapped a little bit. I was hand-holding that, but that's easy to correct right now. What I want to do is check to see if the other image I selected doesn't have this overlap. It doesn't, so that's the image that I'm going to use as my main processing image. I'm going to start in the Basics tab, and I'm going to go down to Fill Light to bring in some of the shadow areas down here. We can do this in other programs afterwards, but it's always good to do it in Camera Raw. I'm going to bring down the recovery. It's brought in some of the shadows, and but we brought out a little bit more clipping on that side for the highlight area, so I'm going to go into recovery and that gets rid of the clipping area and through there. Next we're going to go down to clarity and vibrancy. Clarity is the mid-tone contrast, which I like using a lot, and vibrancy is mid-tone saturation. These are my two favorite tools in the basics tab. I'm going to go over to an area where there's some detail in the buildings, zoom in, right click, go to 100%, and then I'm going to go over to clarity, put the cursor before the zero, and type in 4. I usually use 40 as a preset. Did you see those colors pop a little bit in through there? And then with saturation, I'm going to actually bring that out to fit on screen. It's usually in the sky where that shows a little bit more. So I'm going to click before the 0, type in the 4. You could see the changes in the sky area quite a bit. And the other area in through the uh, city. Next I'm going to go up and select the camera calibration palette. I'm going to select a uh, different calibration profile for each one of these. The one that I'm going to be using for my demonstration without the overlap with the gradient filter is going to be the, I'm going to go into camera portrait. That gives it a little bit of color. The other one I'm going to select and go ahead and go into camera landscape. That gives it a little bit more color. If you don't have extra programs, I usually like this about the best for processing. I'm going to go into NYX for more processing later on in Film Effects, so I can use uh, this file and make it into more of a film file. I'm going to go back up and select the Basics palette and go back in. This is a little dark in here for me, so I want to go to the Fill Light area and bring those shadow areas up slightly. And with Recovery, slide that over to the right, bring a little bit of depth in through there. Next I'm going to go into the sharpening area. I'm going to go up to the detail palette, click on that, and then I'm going to, my preset is 25. In order to see what's going on, I'm going to go down here, select an area, right click, go to 100%, change the 25 to 100. You can see how that popped out the sharpening. My radius, I like at 1.0. I'll change it a little bit by, uh, you know, 0.7 to 1.5, but usually I have it at 1.0. Next, just so you can see what we've done, I'm going to go up to the preview button here and uncheck that so you can see what it looked like before. It's a lot softer. Recheck that. 
Nick says raw sharpener that I'm going to use. So for this particular image here, the one that I'm going to use with Nix, I'm going to change back that back to zero actually. So it has no sharpening effect in raw whatsoever. And the output sharpening will be done for the printing at the time of printing. So I'll show you how to use the tool, but I won't actually use it until I'm doing file sizes for 8x10s, 20x24s, and other various sizes. I'm going to go back up here, select all, right click on the image, go back to fit on screen, and then I'm going to go ahead and open these up into Photoshop CS5. I've gone ahead and opened this up into Photoshop CS5. First thing I'm going to do is go into Filter, go down to Nick Software, and I'm going to select uh, color effects uh, pro 3.0 and there are 52 filters in this section but the filter I want is film effects so I'm going to select film effects and it's pre-selected uh, ag for 400 which is the first in many of the algorithms that they've made up for all the different film types that we used to have I used to carry six or seven backs on uh, in my camera pack for shooting on location and now all I have to do is go in and select the film type uh, you know in the algorithm is already done there for me. Agfa Film is not even in existence anymore that company went out of business several years ago. You need to scroll through each of these it would take a long time but each of them give a little different effect. My favorite uh, film type used to be the Kodak Portrait 160 can see that it pops that color a lot. I've looked through everything in here and if you go to the Fuji Velvia 100 I like that coloring in the water the best of everything that I've seen so far. At this point I'm just going to click OK and open it back up into uh, Photoshop. Right now the biggest problem I see is the shadow areas up and through here and down and through there. In order to fix that we could do uh, overlay masking uh, some gradient masking and instead of doing that I'm going to go down into Nix software go into the Visa 2.0 this tool has saved me a lot of hours over the last few years I'm going to go ahead and do a control point select it slide the brightness slider to the right it lightens it up quite a bit not so much I'm going to alt click hold with a key click bring that point down that's a little bit too much brightness so I'm going to bring that back next what I'm going to do is go in and bring up the saturation pop those greens a little bit more brings that up a little bit better for me we're going to go up into this area bring that down into the greens here a little bit more bring that down slightly bring up the saturation hold down the alt key click and drag to create another area up there bring up the brightness a little bit more bring up the saturation more go ahead and alt hold click and drag. We're going to go into the area that's red and through there. Now if you look down to this area here I'm getting a little bit of uh, overspill onto the buildings. If you click on this you could reduce the size of the circle but I want it up in the hillside so I'm going to do another control point, a neutral control point and put it on top of the roof and it tones that down right away. I'm going to do another one on this roof here so it selects those specific colors and eliminates the uh, overflow from the one area to another. Now I think I've done enough work in through here. I'm going to go down and just click OK and that will open that back up in Photoshop. I'm going to go ahead and do a little healing and cloning here. I want to get rid of this roping and this pole right in through there. We're going to use the magnifying tool, the zoom tool, and go ahead and bring that area out. Then I'm going to select the healing brush down and through here. We want the healing brush, not the spot healing brush. I want to hold down the Alt key. That gives me my target source. And then hold down the Control key on the mouse, drag it over to the rope, let go, and then you're just going to go through, drag along the rope. That gets rid of that. 
I'm going to do the same in through here. Hold down the Alt key, go over. I try to keep it as small as possible, so it's just covering the area that I'm cloning. Then there's less work to do later on. Alt click, hold on the mouse on the left, release, click and drag holding the key down. There may be a couple little things in through here. I'm going to undo that particular one. But hit the zoom key again, hold down the alt key, that makes it minus. You can make it a little larger that way, just clicking. I missed a little bit there, so I'm going to go back to the healing tool again. Hold down the Alt key, drag. That gets rid of all of that. We're going to go ahead and select the Zoom key again. Right click and go to Fit on Screen. I want to get rid of the top of this umbrella. On this one, I'm going to select the Cloning tool. When you have something that light against this dark background, if you use the healing brush, it, what happens is, is that you get a ghost image on top of it. So I'm going to go with a bracket key to make that larger. Hold down the Alt key, hold it down, left click and hold on the mouse, then you have your source up a little bit above it. That clones that in and it looks really natural. At this point I'm going to click on Z which is the keyboard shortcut for the zoom tool. Right click, go to fit on screen, and at this point if you haven't done it before, you should save the image. I'm just about done with it, and I have often uh, lost an hour's worth of work because I don't save as often as I need to. You should go in every 10 or 15 minutes and save the project so that you're, if something happens with your power or the programs, it doesn't delete it on you. Now what you want to do is go up to File, go down to Save As, it's going to go into the folder I selected, uh, Vernaza Working, and I'm going to go ahead, and it's in layers, so I'm not going to save this one in layers. I'm going to go ahead, flatten all the layers. Sometimes you can, you know, you can see what it looked like beforehand. It makes a larger file, so I'm going to go ahead and flatten it, because I really don't want to undo anything. I have an original file if I want to go back and start from scratch. Go down to Save As and save. It's not layered anymore. Tell it OK. We'll save it as a tip. That way if you use power your image has been saved and you can go back and work with it uh, You know, after you get the uh, system up and running again. I want to do a little sharpening to this image so I'm going to go to Filter, Nix Software, Sharpener Pro 3.0, the raw pre-sharpener. Open that up. I let the global sharpening take effect. It does it automatically. And then I selected some negative uh, control points and put them up in the sky so that it wouldn't affect the sky. I don't want any uh, granulation, pixelation up in that area. We'll double click down here, turn off the preview. You can see that it's done the pre-sharpening uh, a lot better than what I can normally do with a raw sharpener. Last thing I'm going to do is go back into filters, Nick software. A visa. What I'm going to do to start with is I'm going to go into structure, bring it over to the right slightly, bring some structure into that, take a control point, go into the water, then I'm going to take the brightness down to the left, make it a little darker, take another control point into the sky, Make that a little bit darker. I think that's about where I want it. I'm going to hold the Alt key down, the mouse, click, hold, and drag. Click the preview on and off. That's about where I want it. That gives it a little bit more definition. It looks better to me there. Click the eyeball off on the top layer. That's where it was before. That's where it is now. I like that a lot more. If you go to my website at european-images.com, you'll be able to view my images and see my workshop schedule for Europe and the United States. I will be giving some uh, workshops this springtime in the U.S. and then in the fall over in Italy. I am an affiliate for Nick Software, and if you use my promo key, European Images, when you buy the product, it will save you 15%. I know you'll love it. Hope to see you on one of the workshops. Ciao.